I want to focus for the next few moments on understanding the meaning for your existence. No human being on earth, 7.1 billion of us, is a mistake. Not one of us is a mistake. We were sent here specifically to do something valuable. That means God had something that needed to be done that made you necessary. God created nothing for entertainment. He created nothing even for beauty. Even though what he created may be beautiful. It was not for beauty. Even the colors of the flowers that you pick and put in your home, the colors really are not for beauty. I discovered in my research that certain insects can only see certain colors. So God designed the color in the flower to attract only one specific type of insect. So that color has a purpose. And most of us don't know our own purpose on earth. So I want to give you five questions to write down that you must answer if you are going to be successful on this planet. Five questions. Write them down. Don't forget them. These five questions are so important that they control the entire world. Everything that every human does on earth is motivated by these five questions. The poorest man sleeping under the bridge is trying to answer these five questions. The wealthiest man living in the palace is struggling with these five questions. Every race, every creed, every ethnic group and every culture is fighting over these five questions. These five questions control the whole world. They actually create industry. These five questions create the fashion world. These five questions develop entertainment worlds. These five questions wake you up every morning. These are the questions that produce corrupt leaders. These are the questions that produce people who abuse their own lives and abuse other people. These five questions control politicians, presidents of countries, and prime ministers. These five questions control pastors. These five questions control young people on the street selling their bodies. It's because of these five questions that young people take drugs and sleep together without marriage. These five questions are so powerful that they cause the destruction of war in the world. What are these five questions? Number one, write it down. Who am I? Who am I? It's a difficult question to answer. The second question that controls the human race is where am I from? Where did I come from? What is my source? Some say you came from a monkey. Others say you came from a salamander that crept up on the rock six million years ago and became a tadpole and became a frog, which also became a monkey that became a man. Some believe that. The third question every human is battling with is why am I here? It's a tough question. The average human being does not know why they're on planet Earth. They wake up every morning, go into a job they hate, working with people they don't like, getting paid less than they're worth, and dying too young from frustration because they don't know why they exist. The fourth question every human must answer is, what can I do? Write it down. What can I do? The average human on earth have no idea about their ability. 90% of the human population will die and never achieve more than 10% of their true ability. This is a tragedy. And the last question every human must answer is where am I going? What is my destination? Everyone wants to know what is my future? 
Where am I going in the next 20 years, 40 years? What will I be when I am 75 or 82? What is my destiny? And these five questions are frustrating the human race. It, it is these five questions that changed my life. Because these five questions are the questions that I couldn't answer. And when I was 13 years old, I began to read the Bible for myself. My father was a Baptist pastor. And he couldn't help me with the five questions. I went to a church and became religious and never got a question answered. So I decided to search for it myself. And I picked up the Bible at age 13, very young, teenager, and I began to read the book of Matthew. And the book of Matthew led me to the book of Mark. And then I read the book of Luke and and I memorized the book of John, and, and my whole life as a teenager exploded. I became like an adult before time, because I learned principles that adults didn't even know. And by the time I was 17 years old, I was the most famous teenager in my country, because of the Bible I memorized. And it was during those years that I began to grapple with these five questions. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What am I really capable of doing? And where am I going? And I discovered that the greatest tragedy in life is not death. There's something worse than death. The greatest tragedy in life is life without a purpose. Nothing is worse than being alive and not knowing why. Breathing oxygen and eating food and getting energy and don't know why you have it. This is a tragedy. To live for 80 years and still didn't know why you were here. That's a tragedy. Without a purpose, life has no meaning. It has no sense of destiny, no sense of precision. Actually, purpose is the third question. Why am I here? And this is the frustration of all humans. Every human wants to be successful. I have never met any human who said, I plan to fail tomorrow. No human wants to fail. Am I right? Everybody wants to succeed. But I have some good news for you. Write this down. Success is predictable. Success is predictable. Success is not luck. Success is not an experiment. You can predict success. I'm going to prove that in a minute. Success is designed by God to be predictable. But I want to quickly say the antithesis also is true. Failure is also predictable. Write it down. Now here is a paradox. Success is predictable. So you can literally plan success. I am a successful today in my life, globally impacting millions of people because I made a decision as a teenager as to what I want to be and do. What made me successful? I'm going to give you the answer now. And it's the same reason why people fail. Success is predictable, and success is, is predictable because life is designed for your success. But failure is also predictable because failure is the same result as success. Let me explain what I mean. God designed everything he created to be successful. You will never see a bird who cannot fly naturally. You'll never see a fish who cannot swim naturally. Every seed, if you put it in the ground and give it water, you don't need to pray. It is designed to bring forth a tree. Everything God created has built into it its own success. And if the plant is here today, and gone tomorrow, how much more important are you to God? 
God is more committed to your success than you are. Why? Write this down. Your success is important to God. God needs you to succeed. When I discovered this, I became very bold. I put pressure on God. I discovered this when I was 17 years old. I discovered that God needed me to succeed. Let me explain why. Because success is built in to creation by every manufacturer. Success is important to every manufacturer who makes a product. Some of you have in your lap an iPad. That iPad has a little symbol on it. It's an apple. That apple is the image of the company. Before that image was placed on that company, the company tested the iPad before it left the factory. They made sure that everything necessary for its success was built into it. Stay with me. And the manufacturer took it and put it in a box. Then he put in the box, he covered it up with a book so you can't see it. He hides the product under a book for a reason. He calls the book the manual. The word manual, write it down. The word manu means to make and al means to think. So manual simply means the maker's mind on paper. When you open the box, you don't see the iPad. You first see the book. And the book always says, before operating this product, please read me completely. <laughs> How many of you in this room read the book completely? Hold your hand up. Don't tell lies. You know you didn't. We never read that book, which means we don't know the mind of the manufacturer concerning his product. <laughs> now that book is simply a book of promises and laws. Write it down. Promises and laws. When you take the manual out, the first thing you will see is a photograph. The image. Then the next page you will see promises this product will perform like this this product will perform this this product is guaranteed to perform this and they have a long list of promises but then when you get to the third page it says follow these instructions obey these laws do not operate near open heat do not operate underwater do not uh, pretend or attempt to open it and fix it yourself. A lot of laws. Do not, do not, do not. Then the next page tells you what to do. And it tells you how to make sure the product succeeds. Then you get to the last two pages and you see something strange. First it gives you what they call a warranty or a guarantee. The manufacturer guarantees that the product will perform exactly what it promises. But then it gives you a warranty. The warranty says, if you obey the laws that are in this book, then we guarantee that this product is under warranty, which means we will personally protect it. Then it says, if there is any defect in this product, do not attempt to fix yourself. Then it says, submit it only to an authorized dealer. Why? There are a lot of dealers, but they ain't authorized. Like Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius, Baha'i, Baha'u'llah, atheism. A lot of authors around, but they are unauthorized dealers. Mm-mm. The only authorized dealers in the world are the ones that the manufacturer sanctions. Like Jesus Christ. Then it says in the book, 
if this product is defective, put it back in the box, seal it, send it back to us at our expense. We will repair it at our expense. We will ship it back to you at our expense. And if it cannot be fixed, we will replace it with a new one at our expense and ship it at our expense. They're being very nice, aren't they? And the issue is, they don't know you. So they are not doing this because they like you. They don't even know you. Which means they are doing all of that, not for your sake. They will defend, protect, replace, repair, restore, not for your sake. They are protecting their name. They are protecting the little apple on the cover. Because they know if the product does not succeed, then their reputation is in trouble. Write the word reputation down in your notes. The word reputation is in the Bible, all through the Bible. Reputation. Let me give you the statement in the Bible for reputation. It is namesake. Namesake. Write it down. Namesake. That's reputation. Everything a manufacturer does is for its reputation, to protect its name. So the success of the product is necessary to protect the reputation of the company. So the worst thing that can happen to a manufacturer is when his product fails. His entire reputation and company can be destroyed. Mm -mm. This is why whenever a company sells a product like a car and discovers a defect, they send out a massive recall. And they say, bring it in free. We will repair it free. Why? If this doesn't work, our reputation can be destroyed. They don't like you. They like their name. <laughs> Stay with me now. So success is necessary for the manufacturer. <laughs> you are a product. And the first thing the manufacturer placed on you is his image. I'm going to scream all by myself right now. The manufacturer says, let us make a product in our image. Oh, come on. If you got the image, lift your hands and shout hallelujah. The first thing he put on you is the most important thing to him. His image. You are just like the manufacturer. That means your failure is bad for God. I have come with good news. The good news is South Africa from this day forward you cannot fail anymore. God has to guarantee your success not to protect you. God has to make sure that the vision he gives you succeeds because his reputation is on the line. So when you read the Bible, all through the Bible, God would say these to his people. He would say, even though you are stiff-necked, you murmur, you complain, and I want to kill you. He said, I will prosper you, and I will restore you, and I will heal you, and I will redeem you. Listen, for my name, come on, clap them hands and scream hallelujah.
no matter where you are right now in your life I promise you I guarantee you that you are coming out of your situation not for your name's sake but for his name's sake clap your hands and thank God he's the manufacturer you cannot fail in your business and this is why if he told you to go to university don't worry about tuition if he told you to build a business you have the ability if he told you to build a church you have the ability if he told you to go into politics you have the ability if he told you to be a lawyer you have the ability if he told you to be a teacher you have the ability if he told you to build a school you have the ability whatever he told you he will do it for his name somebody scream hallelujah oh lift your hands say lord don't heal me for my sake heal me for your name's sake see the reason why some of you don't get healed when you pray is because you want to get healed so you could feel good But tonight, diabetes is going away. Tonight, high blood pressure is coming back to normal. Tonight, AIDS will be eradicated. Tonight, cancer will be healed in this building. Not for your name's sake, but for his name's sake. Shout hallelujah. Clap your hands. Give God a praise. Tell your neighbor, I have to succeed to protect his reputation. That is why this ministry cannot fail. Whatever God told your pastor has to come to pass. Oh Lord. That's why it's important to announce what God told you. When you make it public, you put pressure on it. Oh, come on, young man. You got to talk about your vision. You got to talk about your dream and tell everybody, God told me this. God told me this. God told me this. And he has to protect his reputation. Clap your hands and scream hallelujah. So stop being afraid to believe your dream. This ain't your dream, it's his dream. Your success is good for God. So he has to make sure you succeed. That's why I am so bold. You know, when you discover who you are, you make announcements you can't pay for. Stop waiting for money before you make announcements. When he tells you, tell everybody. When you tell him, it puts pressure on him. That's why I have no doubt in the next 10 years, everything you told your friends that they laughed at will come to pass. Come on, act like you believe that now. Act like you just heard from God. Come on, stand up and shout. It is done to protect his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It shall come to pass for his name. Oh, hallelujah. Shout amen. So the secret to your success is built in God created birds to fly so if birds don't fly his name is in trouble God created fish to swim so if fish can't swim his reputation is in trouble God created seeds to bring forth trees so if a seed doesn't bring forth a tree God's reputation is in trouble so God is very wise 
he built into everything laws to guarantee its success. <laughs> That's why God told Joshua, if you take my laws, read my laws, memorize my laws, obey my laws, accept my laws, submit to my laws, you shall have good success. Can I suggest something to you? When you discover the laws of God, you don't need to pray. Oh, look at you. You don't understand what I just said. <clears throat> the car that you bought was made by a manufacturer. The manufacturer built into the car the laws for function. You don't need to pray about what to put in your gasoline tank. It's a law. The manufacturer says, you shall use unleaded gasoline only. He didn't ask your permission. He built the law into the car. And when it comes to you, it comes with the laws built in. Now, if you decide you like orange juice, and you're going to put orange juice in your car because you like orange juice, then the car malfunctions. In other words, you don't bring your laws to God. You submit to the laws of the manufacturer and it guarantees success. Therefore, God has designed everything to function by laws. And this is why I want to take home this, write this down. Laws were given to guarantee success. Laws were not given to restrict you. When God says, do not fornicate, that's a law. That means don't have sex until you are married. Now, it's amazing. God doesn't explain it. Manufacturers don't explain laws. They just announce them. For example, the manufacturer says when you buy an iron, it says, do not operate near water. They don't tell you why. <laughs> oh, come on, you're smart. They will never say, if you operate by water, you will die from shock. They just says, do not operate near water. Some of you test the manufacturer's law. That's why you lost your hair. God designed the fish to be in water. That's a law. Fish will never leave water. They are smarter than humans. <laughs> Birds were designed to fly in the air. They will never try to become fish. If you put a seed on the ground on a tiled floor in the lobby and leave it there for 50 years, it will remain a seed. Why? You disobeyed the law of the seed. It needs soil and moisture. Humans are the only creatures God got problems with. We are the only ones who will test the law. Test the law to see if it's true. That's why you're broke, divorced, and sick. But I declare every human under the sound of my voice are going to submit to the laws of God from this night forward and God says you shall have good success. Give him a hand for success. Oh, come on, give him praise.
success, write this down, is a result of decisions. Whatever you are right now, you decided to become. Don't you blame anyone for your predicament right now. Success is a result of decisions. Write this down, please. Failure in life is a result of decisions. Whatever you decide determines your destiny. In other words, everyone becomes what they decide to be. I decided to be successful, so I decided not to smoke. Because when I wrote my vision on paper at age 14, I saw my vision. I wrote it on paper. I want to travel around the world. I want to build buildings. I want to bring an educational system into the world. I want to own my own aircraft. I want to become a counselor. I want to become a consultant to countries. I wrote it down. I want to be an advisor to governments. At age 14, I wrote that down. So I knew if I start taking drugs, having sex, and drinking alcohol, the alcohol will kill my liver, the smoke will destroy my lungs, and the sex will give me a baby I can't pay for. So my vision determined my discipline. Say it with me. Vision determines discipline. If you don't know where you're going, you'll do anything with your life. Purpose brings discipline. I had so many women that tried to have sex with me. Because I'm a good looking brother. When I was 17 years old, I was producing music that became the number one hit songs in our country. Every station was playing our music. At 17, we were the most famous group in the whole country. And we had concerts packed with kids, thousands of them. And the girls would come on the front row because we were all handsome brothers. And they would try to talk to us afterwards and get us to take them out and take them in their cars and have sex with us. And I would say to them, the minute you ask me for sex, you are no longer my friend. Why? You are a distraction and a demon. Write this down. A true friend is one who can help you get to your destiny. I'm going to say it again. A true friend is anyone who will help you get to your destiny. So if anyone wants you to do anything that stops you from your destiny, that's not a friend, that's an enemy. Decisions determine success. So when I got married to my wife at age 25, I was a virgin, so was my wife. Let me tell you, young people, why God says don't fornicate. Here's why. Write it down. So that you will enjoy your memories. God wants you to live your whole life with good memories, not regrets. So he protects you by giving you laws to protect your memory. And there's some of you in this room right now, your memories are tragic. If you obey God, you'll never have a bad memory. God wants you to succeed. He gave you birth to succeed. He wants you to succeed more than you want to succeed for his namesake. And God is faithful to the vision he put in your life. He is faithful to it because he needs you to succeed for his reputation. Your future is God's past. In other words, God finished you before he started you. Oh, I need to be here two more days. God 
God's plan for your life is already finished. He's just hoping you just keep the laws. You know, it's incredible. When I discovered this, I was a teenager and I became very bold because what you were born to do is already finished. When I discovered that, I became very confident. God never begins until he's finished. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God says, I know the plans I have for you already. Plans to what? Prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. I know your plans already. God already finished you before he started you. In the book of Isaiah, when I read this, it changed my life. God says, remember this. Put it in your mind and don't forget it. Now, three of those sentences means the same thing. Whenever God says, something three times it's the most important thing it's the same word as verily he says remember this fix it in your mind do not forget it same words what is so important God says remember this I am God and there's none like me he said now don't forget that I am God and there's none like me. Second, I am God, and I always said the end before the beginning. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. He says, I am God. There's none like me. And I always said the end before the beginning. Next verse. And I make known from ancient times what is yet to come. I say, my purpose will stand. That scripture changed my life. I want to close on that scripture. I need some help. Uh, can you come help me, sir? Here. You can run down here quick. I want you to stand here for me. Just face me. Okay. God says, face me. God says, look, I always said the end first. Then I back up and begin. God says, there's no God like that. Let me say it again. Isaiah says, there's no God like me, for I said the end before the beginning. That means I finish before I start. I complete before I commence anything. Oh, stay with me. I'm getting ready to shout all by myself. God says, you see, whenever you see me start something, that is evidence that it's finished. Tell your neighbor, I began. I exist. Here's the good news. God would not allow you to have been conceived in your mother's womb unless there was something already finished that you were born to start. Come on, buy the CD right away. I'm talking to your spirit tonight. That means you are not a mistake. You are a destined baby already finished. God never begins with the beginning. He begins with the end. Then he begins. So your success is already finished. Oh. Then God says, I set your end before I begin you. And then at the beginning he says, I make known at the beginning your end. That's why as a child you were dreaming all the time. That was your destiny screaming at you. This is why you got big dreams. Those dreams are real. Don't ever judge your destiny by the location of your birth. I am sure 
that Pastor Art's parents had no idea what was in their house. Oh, come on, somebody. And I've come to tell you and you and you and you and you all around the nation that your parents have no idea who you are. Oh, somebody scream. Scientists say that when a man and woman comes together in intercourse and the man releases the sperm, scientists have proven no less than 500 million are released. 500 million. And they all dash toward the egg. And they fight to see who would get there first. This is scientifically proven. So sperms are fighting all the time. Fighting. Fighting. Guess who won? Oh, come on! Boom, Fontaine! I have an announcement to make. You are not going to be a winner. You are here because... Go ahead and scream, somebody. Hallelujah! Oh! All right! Yeah. I'm a winner! That's why I'm here! Stop feeling bad about yourself. Stand up straight. Square your shoulders. Go to work tomorrow walking like you are a winner. Dress like a winner. Talk like a winner. And tell everybody, I am here because I am. Hallelujah. So stop telling people you are one in a million. You are one in 499 million. The Bible says, so now for a few more minutes, the Bible says, God saw you in your mother's womb. Psalm 138. Watch this. That means God was watching your mother and daddy get it on. In the car. Behind the barn. In the bush. You thought she was alone, huh? And God didn't care whether you were in wedlock, out of wedlock, under the lock, on top of the lock, beside the lock. It wouldn't matter. It was time for you to come. And God saw 500 million sperms dashing toward the egg. And God says, mm, let's see, mm, I want that one. That was you. Oh, come on, give him a praise. You are a chosen. Hey, you are chosen. That one. That one. That one. He chose you up to do this work. It's already finished. So they got abortion discussions, don't they? You believe in pro-choice? Choice? I don't believe in either of them. I believe in pre-choice. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1. For he chose you in him before the foundation of the world. That means God only used your parents to get you here. It doesn't matter what they are, who they are, or what they're doing. He just used them to get you here. This is your time now. You are not an illegitimate child. You didn't do anything wrong. They are leg illegitimate parents. You are a legitimate baby. You were chosen by God. 
shout hallelujah I say shout hallelujah chosen by God and God has to make sure you succeed so the dream that you see is real it's already finished and you were born to start it God will never begin anything before it's finished some of you think that Jesus died 2,000 years ago not true if that was true then that means Jesus was not finished before he started Jesus Christ did not die 2,000 years ago that's too late let me give you something to never forget before God created you the Bible says he counseled himself he sat in a meeting with himself or three of them Father Son Holy Ghost let me quote what it says it's found in Proverbs 19 verse 21 write that down it says <laughs> It says, he chose you by his counsel. The word counsel in Hebrew meant a meeting. It says, <laughs> Proverbs 19 verse 21. He says, it's not your plans that are important. God purposed you by his counsel this is very important that means God had a meeting about you before you manifested and in the meeting he decided to have you and only he his son and the spirit were in the meeting and he knew what he wanted he wanted to have you because he had a destination, an assignment, before you even existed. And in the meeting, there was a concern. The word said to the Father, if we create them and give them a will, they may decide against us and disobey us. And the Father said, that's a possibility. And the Spirit says, so what are we going to do? And the Word says, I tell you what, if they were to disobey us, we would have to redeem them. So what I'll do is, I'll pay the price now. I'll die now before we make them. So in the meeting, the Father agreed. Okay, son, you're dead. And when everything was finished in the meeting, then they said, let's begin. That's why the Bible does not say Jesus died for you 2,000 years ago. The Bible says, behold the lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. Come on, give him a, give him a scream tonight. Come on, give him a scream tonight. Yes! 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 That is why when Adam sinned, God did not panic. Why? It was covered. That's why when you failed last week, God didn't panic. Because you cannot fail. You will succeed. He already got your plans all laid out. Come on, give God a praise. Next year will be your best year. Next year will be your best year. Next year will be your best year. Because success is guaranteed for his name's sake. Give him, give him a praise. Stand up on your feet and shout 
to the king. Hallelujah. Come on, Pretoria. Give him praise. Tell your neighbor, I'm a chosen baby. Tell your neighbor, I'm already finished. That's why I'm here tonight. I'm on my way to my destination. And I cannot fail. Somebody scream. Yes! That's why when you sinned, he came and got you. He didn't save you for yourself. He was thinking about himself. He said, I have to save him. I have to save her to protect my reputation. I must make sure that she gets to her dream, that he gets to his destination. Your salvation is guaranteed. Somebody scream hallelujah. This is why you come back to God. Listen, you don't come back to God to join a church. You got to make it to your destiny. The Bible says he predestined you. Pre, 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 pre. Pre means before. He predestined you. And here you are. You wandered off course. Gone into foolish sins. And God says, that's okay. And he sends the Holy Ghost and he brings you back in line with God's purpose. Come back home and fulfill your destiny. Tonight, somebody scream, hallelujah. That is why he saves us. Eleven children. I am number six. Can you imagine if my mother said to my father, Five is enough. Five is enough. Let's kill this one. Let's kill this one. Fifty seven best selling books. She would not be killing a baby. She would be killing an author of 57 books. The pastor of the largest church in the Bahamas. The owner of five businesses. A global advisor. A consultant to governments. She'd be killing all of that, including your preacher tonight. And he's preaching real good tonight. Somebody scream, thank God. This is why God hates abortion. Abortion is not the death of a baby, it's the termination of a destiny. And that's why he saved you. To do the works prepared for you before the world began. You are loaded tonight. Just suppose Moses didn't come back. Only God could look at a, a murderer like Moses. And God saw in him Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. In a murderer. God saw in the murderer the Ten Commandments. The leader of an entire million people. When God saved that basket, he was saving the first five books of the Bible. Hey boys, say destiny.
when Paul was accused of serial killer he killed all those people in the name of his belief and God didn't kill him God knocked him off his horse and say Saul inside of you is a Paul see some of you were born Saul but you are really Paul tell your neighbor you don't know who I am yet stick around for a few more years and I'll manifest myself and you're gonna be glad you sat next to me somebody scream I'm coming soon say it I'm coming soon hey I'm coming soon you ain't seen me yet and God says Saul I'm gonna save you he wasn't saving a man he was saving Facing 2 Corinthians, Colossians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Thessalonians, Thessalonica, Timothy. He was saving the New Testament when he saved Paul. That's why you're here tonight. He wants to save all the magazines and the schools and the ministry and all the things that you're carrying. He wants to save your destiny. Give God a praise. You will be saved. Kobashata. Oh, I feel the anointing of God here tonight. Come on, Pretoria. This is your moment. You came here tonight, sitting in your chair, and God sent me from around the world because he's tired of you wasting time. God says, your life begins tonight. I want you to stop playing games with your life. You got to discover who you are where you came from, why you came here, what you can do, and where you're going. And the Holy Ghost will give you the answers tonight.